Hello and welcome back to the channel. This will be video 6 in our Python tutorial series. So if you missed the first ones on installing and setting up Python and PyCharm, initial introductions to variable types, getting started with functions, things along those lines, be sure to check those out. If those are concepts you're unfamiliar with, we'll be using all that kind of stuff going forward. In our last video, uh, we took a look at using functions so that we could repeat certain important pieces of code and in this video, we're going to be looking at dictionaries, while loops, for loops, and exponentials. So what I have created and what you see on the screen right now is actually called a dictionary within Python. As identified by these squiggly brackets, um, a dictionary contains what's called a key and then a value. And this together is a key value pair. And what that means is you can look something up inside of a dictionary by knowing the key. For example, if I want to print the month associated with, you know, January, the first month, and I know the key for it, I type the key into these square brackets as I call the dictionary, and you'll see we get January. Um, but what's also kind of nice, you can uh, use a function that Python has built in called uh, .get. So you do your list name, dot get, and then the key, and it gives you the value, and so that looks just the same. Um, but what you'll notice is you can actually, the nice thing about the dot get function is you can leave a default. So if it doesn't find it, then you can say no key value pair exists. So the, the limitation of what we just did um, prior to this by putting the key in the square brackets is there's no if statement you know if it's either the key better exists or you're going to get an error with the dot get function you have the option of giving it a default if it doesn't exist so I'll punch in 13 and you'll see no key value pair exists and the dot get function is actually really nice when you're uncertain about your keys obviously with months that's not something there's too much uncertainty around so you really don't need the dot get if you're comfortable saying I'm pretty sure I know when my key pair exists and when it doesn't. Um, the, the applications of dictionaries are, are really extensive. You can use them for storing users or user data, login information, passwords. If you're keeping something like a grade book, you could have the student and then their affiliated grade or you can have the assignment and then what score they got with the assignment. Um, the dictionary really can be used for any sort of easy lookup that you might have a whole bunch of information in one side of it and you just want an easy index value to look it up by. So a, a really complex but doable example of a dictionary would be if you had a student name as your key, so student name, and then you can actually have any type of value as the value for your dictionary. So you could put an entire list instead of just January you could say okay well this student got a 14% on his first assignment a 13% on his second assignment a 15 and a 99 because he really pulled it together near the end well if you go and you print the we have to call months because that's what our that's what our list is but if you print the value associated with the key student then what you're gonna see is you get that entire list printed out so even though what I went with was months and I showed obviously a string for the key and a string for the value just know you can use anything for either of those you can use any variable type Python accepts as a key and as the value pair so moving on we're actually gonna dive into while loops because it goes nicely with this list and what we're going to do is we're going to create a while loop that is going to show us every month until we get through our list. So we're going to create a counter to do that and then we're going to create our while loop and you, you've probably seen um, in our previous video or you're just familiar with the way functions work um, while loops are fairly similar you put the keyword while and then your condition for checking this goes back to the four loops we used in previous videos as well and then you're looking for a condition and in this case we're checking that while the length and this len is a python built-in function for checking the length of objects like lists dictionaries anything along those lines anything that has a 
countable length. So even strings have, have that function where it tells you how many characters. And while our counter is less than, oh, that should be less than or equals to. While our counter is less than or equal to the length of the total list, we're going to print out whatever the, the value associated with that key is. And so to do that, we're going to call the string uh, conversion of our counter because our counter is an integer but obviously these these uh, keys as we defined them were strings so we're just going to convert our counter to a string which we've talked about previously as well and then we're going to print whatever month is associated with that but what what you'll see here is actually we've created an infinite loop because there's nothing that is ever going to make the counter go up so this is very important you need to put a condition that increments the counter on the end of a while statement. Python's actually going to see an infinite loop as an error statement and rather than let the computer crash by running a loop forever it should stop you. So we're going to actually increment the counter once we've printed the months and this should... there we go. So just by doing that we just printed out in order every key value pair in our loop and that stopped at December and ended the code. So a while loop is really nice, especially if you have an application of unknown length where maybe you need every value that's inside of a dictionary, but you don't even know how long the dictionary is, or you're calling data from somewhere outside of your realm. You're using an API or a plugin or something. While loops are really advantageous. A lot of game logic and things like that use while loops, um, but they also, they they need a condition like what we have in here where there's a specified um, and yet still open-ended thing so if you were to extend the months you know for some reason they had a 13th month then this automatically is going to run 13 times and so let's say we need a loop to only run four times regardless of whether or not this changes well, there's a different kind of loop that we're going to talk about now that is the for loop. And a for loop is actually a little bit, a, a little bit um, easier to know how many times it's going to run. So you don't have to worry about the endless infinite loop scenario of a while loop. A for loop, you would say for i in range, and you're actually defining the range of how many times it's going to run uh, and you so we'll say one to four print and let's just use our months dictionary again and say print the string version of I and what you'll see immediately upon running this is we get w the first one the second one and the third one a few things to talk about here the range function goes up to but does not include the end cap of your range so it does count your starting point but it does not execute this one so if you actually need a for loop to run four times you need to have the range from zero to five and so again we're using essentially the exact same we're using essentially the exact same functionality and I I could have called I anything um, I know we called it counter for the while loop I could have called it counter that would be fine um, and and so it's it's really doing the exact same thing if we decide to make the range up to 13 but what we have now is if for some reason some dummy adds a 13th month you know this for loop is actually just going to stop at 12 it's never going to give you more than 13 so that's just two different types of loops uh, that's kind of good to know um, but it, the, the scenario where you would need one or the other and wouldn't be able to use whichever one you're more familiar with is fairly rare and by the time you're comfortable with loops it's the sort of thing that's going to make itself apparent so for now, that's just a basic example of both loops. But loops are really useful to repeat code without having to add it. So what becomes really powerful is when you put functions, which we've talked about previously, inside of loops. And that's actually what we're going to do next. We're going to create an exponential scenario. So we're going to say 
we are going to create a function and we'll call it define uh, exponential. And we don't need anything passed in, but uh, what we are going to do, actually we do need two variables passed in. We need the base number and we need the power it's being raised to. And inside of the exponential function, we're going to have a loop. So I'll go ahead and get rid of our counter loop. And what, think about what an exponential is doing. An exponential is saying your base number is being multiplied times your base number again. And that's going to be done over and over again until it's, it's resulted in the power you need. So, so actually, if you think about it, what if we put a zero into this? So you're going to start with a one and we're going to create a variable called answer and initially answer equals one and then counter equals zero. And we will say while counter less than uh, should this be less than or equal to? We'll do less than for now and see. While counter is less than the power, we are going to do this, what we wrote down here. We're going to do base num times itself. And then the answer is going to be equal to that. <coughs> Although actually this is counter equal to power. Answer equal to we need the answer to start out equal to the base number. Answer equals, yeah, because if we did this, then every time the loop executed, it would just be multiplying the base number times itself twice, and that's not useful for anybody. Uh, so here, what we're saying is uh, answer equals base num, counter equals zero. While counter is less than power, answer equals base num times answer and we go ahead and we add one to our counter and one thing to say about what I did right here this plus equals is exactly the same thing as saying counter is equal to counter plus one Python gives you the option to get rid of having to type the variable a second time and you can just tack the function right before the equal sign and that's saying it's going to add one to itself um, but okay, let's see how close we got and what we need to tweak after this. So let's just go ahead and create exponential and let's say we want three to the third power. And if our code is perfect, which it never is first try, this would give us 27. And it gave us nothing most likely because we did not print the answer, which is what we want to do at the end of our code. So there we actually got 81, which three to the first power is three, second power is nine, third power is 27. So something we did, answer equals base num. Let's try power minus one. So that's 27, but let's see if we do two to the fifth. 32, okay, and let's try just five squared, 25. Okay, my job is not to reinvent the wheel and create a calculator uh, from scratch, but I am just trying to show you functionality and application of while loops and how they can be used to, you know, rather than when we do, let's make this quite a bit larger, five to the fifth power, rather than having to multiply five times five and then 25 times five and then 125 times five we're over and over and over again, we've written the code to do it once and we've just defined the conditions for how many times it needs to happen. So you can think of an exponential function really as a while loop. Um, that's maybe oversimplifying it, but you can see right away the power of while loops, the application, you could absolutely create this with a for loop as well. This video is getting a little lengthy and I don't want to do that to you guys now. But hopefully this was a useful in introduction to dictionaries, while loops, for loops, and exponentials. If you have any questions about anything you saw here today or have any ideas for videos you'd like to see in the future, be sure to let me know in the comments section. 
And hopefully you found this helpful and feel free to like and subscribe if you'd like to stay tuned for future tutorials. And as always, thanks for checking out the channel. Thanks. Bye.